carbon. The second compound we are going to see is ammonia, which is also as important as hydrogen chloride and hydrochloric acid. And this has various methods of preparation and uh, basically ammonia is found when organic matter degrades, decomposes, when they break down, ammonia is one of the product. Actually speaking, when you check or test your human urine for any abnormalities, the normal would thing would be that it smells ammoniacal, means it releases ammonia. Okay, now let's go into the methods of preparation. The first method being the laboratory method. Okay, for this the rule is that any ammonium salt can react with an alkali, preferably NaOH or calcium hydroxide. What is an alkali? Alkali is a base that is soluble. In other words, soluble bases are called alkalis. So when they are heated, it releases a salt, water and ammonia. So this is the basic rule. So any ammonium salt reacts with an alkali to give you salt, water and ammonia. Now we can see some salts like say ammonium sulfate. This could react. This is an ammonium salt. Ammonium chloride. This also could react. Now when we use say sodium hydroxide the possible salt that you would get would be sodium sulfate plus water plus ammonia. Okay, 2 here to 10, 6. So, 2 molecules of water. Similarly, we could use ammonium chloride and calcium hydroxide to give you what could be the salt. This calcium can combine with chlorine to give calcium chloride plus again water and ammonia. Here you have two, so we have two here and two here, six and two molecules of water. These are the different ways we can form. Now in the laboratory, we prefer this ammonium chloride plus we use calcium hydroxide to give calcium chloride, water and ammonia. Now let's go into the diagram. To refresh again, the reactants that we used are ammonium chloride plus the alkali used is calcium hydroxide to give calcium chloride plus water plus ammonia. This is what is done in the laboratory. Now, why are we using these reactants? Generally all ammonium compounds, white solids, they will release with alkali, they react to give you ammonia. The first thing that we need to see are the reactants used. As we see in the equation, we have ammonium chloride and calcium hydroxide. We use this calcium hydroxide, though we saw that sodium hydroxide also could be used. This is preferred. 
Why is this preferred? Because calcium hydroxide is cheap and the most important, it is not deliquescent. What do you mean by the word deliquescent? A substance which absorbs moisture and becomes a liquid is deliquescent. Here, if we are going to use sodium hydroxide here, sodium hydroxide is highly deliquescent. Calcium hydroxide is not deliquescent. So we make use of calcium hydroxide and not sodium hydroxide. Again, we can use ammonium chloride. Now this ammonium chloride has a property called sublimation. It is sublimable, which means it will evaporate directly from the solid state. Okay. Therefore, a higher ratio of calcium hydroxide is used. Why do we use it in a higher ratio? Because as this is sublimable, as we can lose this sodium ammonium chloride, if we use a higher ratio, probably this is three parts and this is two parts, then this is able to counter or balance the loss of ammonium chloride by sublimation. Okay. The, both these reactants, in fact, are solids. Both are in the solid form. Both the reactants are in the solid form. Therefore, they have to be powdered. See, when you have, when you run a race and come back home, and you're so thirsty and you want to have a drink. If you're going to take a cube of sugar and put it in water, it's going to take a long time. Whereas, when you have powdered sugar, if you put two spoons of powdered sugar, in fractions of second, the drink is ready. What makes the difference? It gives you more area of absorption. So the same rule applies here. We prefer this in the powdered state so that there is more area of absorption and reaction to happen. And now it is heated. And when it is heated, let's go to the next part that is the temperature. It's a normal, it's just heated. What are the products that are formed? You have calcium chloride, you have water and ammonia. When you see this apparatus, doesn't it look something different? Usually we always have a round bottom flask straight. But here is something, it is placed in an inclined position. The round bottom flask is in an inclined position. Why is it so? See, we are heating this and one of the products form this water that also would be in the form of vapor. Now as it goes down, it can cool down and it can trickle back. Remember, this is made of glass and if water is going to trickle back, it's going to break the apparatus. Okay, so this is inclined to prevent water from trickling back. Okay. Now, just like hydrogen chloride gas, ammonia also is highly soluble in water. So we need to take certain precautions. And we go into the next step. That is dry. Because water is also one of the products and what we need is pure ammonia gas without traces of water. So we need to use a drying agent. There are different drying agents but the drying agent used in to dry this ammonia gas is quicklime or calcium oxide. This is the drying agent used. Why do we use calcium oxide or quicklime and we don't use anything else because 
this is basic so no reaction with ammonia which is also basic okay the drying agents not used are concentrated sulfuric acid why because this is acidic and ammonia is basic so they would react to give ammonium sulfate let us see how it reacts ammonia plus concentrated sulfuric acid to give you ammonium sulfate The second one that is not preferred is phosphorus pentoxide. This again reacts to give ammonium phosphate. Ammonia plus phosphorus pentoxide plus water to give ammonium phosphate. because phosphorus is 2 this is 6 and water becomes 3 ok the third one that we can't use is fused calcium chloride because it forms a an, just an addition compound eight molecules of this would combine just to form an addition compound like this okay so all these three drying agents are not used because they react to form different products as we saw here they must be in the powdered form so the first thing we do is the reactants should be in the powdered form So that there is quick reaction happening. The second thing that we need to do is the flask should be in an inclined position. We should take care that it is not straight so that the water trickles back. Okay. The third one is ammonium salts are used but ammonium nitrate is not used. Why is this ammonium nitrate not used? Because of two reasons. One reason is it is explosive. If you see any bomb explosion or any explosions, they will always find out that this many kilograms of ammonium nitrate is found here or there. So this is the raw material for all explosives. So it's highly explosive in nature. Moreover, when it is heated, it breaks down into nitrous oxide and water vapor. So it is unstable. Therefore, we don't use ammonium nitrate. And then it's in an inclined position and the reactants are in the powdered form. So these are the precautions that we need to take. Is there any water here? No. How is it collected? It is going up and ammonia is lighter than air. Few gases which are lighter than air and ammonia is one among them. It is lighter than air. Therefore, what would it do here? It would displace the air downward and it would go up. So it's collected by downward displacement of air. Okay. And why is it not collected over water? 
not collected over water because it is highly soluble in water. That is why we don't collect it over water. So this is about the collection part. The last part is how to identify that the gas that we have collected is ammonia and the reaction is over. Okay, so the last part is identification. identification when you when you know that the experiment you want to check that the experiment is complete you just take a glass rod that is that you have dipped in concentrated HCl and bring it near this the mouth of this jar it would produce dense white fumes and these dense white fumes are formed when ammonia comes into contact with HCl, it forms ammonium chloride. So that is the identification for ammonia gas that has been formed. So this is the laboratory method of preparation.